hi there this is Ronke Posh Ronkeadini and welcome to my channel so I talk here about parenting and education and a little bit of lifestyle um, self-help tips and the likes for those that know what I do thank you for coming back to the channel if you're new here thank you for being here and I'm sure before the end of this video you would have subscribed so I don't need to ask you to subscribe so one of my most popular videos in fact I noticed that um, as at 2022 December one of my most popular videos and has got about 10,000 views and um, yeah so that's an achievement for me <laughs> that's an achievement for me and that video um, the ti video title is 10 things I wish I knew before I started the school and it's often said that when the video hits you try and do more of that kind of video which is some funny reason it's been over a year and in fact I just started YouTubing when I started that if you see the video I mean the content is awesome but the quality and everything that's why it's important to just start you don't wait for perfection um, they say it's analysis paralysis just carry on and do what it is that you have to do otherwise mm. anyway let's get to the meat 10 things that um, many school owners wish they knew if you call yourself a school owner or a school leader 10 things that they actually wish somebody had told them um, 10 things about this journey that um, you wouldn't get that information online but guess what I'm here to share generously as I always do because when I started this journey I often say it was quite lonely I didn't have a lot of help there weren't a lot of resources online people were not and are still not very generous when it comes to content and that is why I actually like to um, give good content and produce good content and I thank you all for engaging so um, what first thing I'm going to say is that when you start a school or when you're on, you've started a school already it can actually be a lonely walk it can be a very very lonely walk um, sometimes you feel very alone and vulnerable sometimes you just you know you feel a bit down when things are not going as you want them to go when the bank account is not as full as you want it to be when the children in the school are not as many as you want them to be and I know that um, number of children is a significant metric for many people that have schools um, however I keep saying that value and tribe the value you deliver and the type of people you're trying to attract to your school uh, they're very very important you can have everyone in your school can have hundreds and thousands of children in your school and not have any kind of peace if you don't have your tribe so you have to be very careful is it the money first what is it that you want first for your school so it can be a lonely walk now sometimes that you want to have some conversations and you don't want to have it in a whatsapp group you don't want to go on facebook and have it in a facebook group because um number one it's not the sensitive information sometimes uh sometimes you don't want to share your vulnerability with the whole world concerning certain aspects um sometimes um you'd rather just have that one friend that understands i mean it's taken me up to about 10 years before i found i think one friend that really is an educator has a school and we kind of like talk about you know things on the back end so it can actually be a very lonely walk when you run a school and you're not partnering with anybody in terms of um, the school ownership there's some things that you don't want to talk about with your um, administrative staff or your teachers or you know because certain things that um, are quite high level and it would be nice to have a community of people or a couple of friends two three four people you can bang heads together you can strategize you can feel sorry for yourself you can cry together you can pray together you can do stuff together the same way that you have um good bodies and good friends that you, you know prayer partners that kind of thing um it's always nice to have a school partner <laughs> if that is a good word for you, if you have a better word you can drop it in the comment section two number two so that's the transition for you you will lose friends and family trust me you will lose friends and you would lose family i've heard so many stories it's happened to me it, you can lose friends you can lose family you can lose both you can lose some of them you can lose all of them i've heard too many stories about things that have happened to people um i've even heard of someone that went to beat his wife in the school in front of some pupils and some teachers and stripped her naked i've heard of a man who 
um, owned the land that the wife built on the school. The school was doing very well, and I don't know what he wanted. Um, and she didn't come to, she didn't agree to it. And he said, oh, I want my land. I want to use my land for something else. And the school was really, really massive at this time. So we heard, heard a lot of stories, heard a, lot, a lot of heartbreak um, when it comes to um, having a school. So if you are one of those people that maybe you are using family property or family money or you, you had people invest and there were no formal agreements, you want to quickly get agreements. You want to get an agreement before you start all those sort of things. So that everything is on paper and you don't kind of like get into trouble along the way so that's my number two tip because oftentimes people lose friends and the thing with schools is that it's easy for what because you make a lot of money i was told that it takes about 10 years for a school to start making money and when we hit 10 years in fact we're 10 years we were 10 years in february and i was thinking where's the money they're talking about what exactly is the money they're talking about but because you constantly reinvest in the school the school looks good your product the children are doing very well people assume that it equates to money in the pocket but a lot of money goes back into the school and money is a relative thing so you can have one million in the account and it's nothing to a but that's the one million is the whole world to be so people will make assumptions and because assume that oh you have this money you are balling and you're not you know buying them their own car giving them a share of your profit and that kind of thing so you will get that so be very very careful with friends with family and don't be too sentimental you can't run a business with sentiment some of these things that i'm telling you is not because i knew it before i started some of these things i've had to learn the hard way along the way so um if you're not there yet where you're having challenges make sure that you just fine tune everything now so that mm, you're not gonna say i never spare it <laughs> now three now point number three you will need money all the time you're going to need money all the time all the time all the time I don't know the day that we don't spend money or the week that we don't spend money you're spending money on the school bus you're spending money on fresh food for the children that eat school meals you're you are spending money um we we're we spending money on diesel thank god we don't do that anymore because we now do solar and power supply in our area actually is significantly better now so we don't spend money that but you're always buying one thing or the other for your school we bought by so that we try and stop the back and forth so we'd we'll go to, into lagos and then we'll go and buy the um uh, toiletries, the gross, um, not groceries, the toiletries, the, you know, the cleaning agents, the um, the window cleaners, and all those sort of things that we're going to need. But you you do that, and I must actually say this was not one of the points I wanted to discuss. There was a day that I went to the market, Ipori market, to be specific, and I saw a school leader of a very very big school, and I saw, saw, saw her sitting down there and trying to get out get some gifts for her pupils her students actually because yeah well pupil students she has a she has the whole um whole works and i said oh, what are you doing there here my kind of you know it's the same thing that i'm doing here now uh, and but i was just thinking ah this woman she has really level where she's not going to be in the market but the thing is that if you don't if you're not hands-on this nigeria they will cheat you to a large extent especially those places where you have to pay cash they will they're gonna cheat you I like remember my dad used to say that if you cook soup, you should cook for the devil. Knowing that there are people that are ready to just cheat you in this Nigeria. So, oftentimes you might have to get your get involved in a lot of things. Having said that, I still believe in structure. You can't be everywhere. Or you can't just be everywhere. So, I believe in structure. But I just thought to mention that. So, you're going to need money all the time. Um, I also know of a lady that was in a school. Her school was doing well. But she needed more money that was coming in at that particular point in time because she was doing a lot of reinvestment into the school and they had projects in the school and she went back to full-time employment got someone that was competent enough to run the school in her absence and she was working and bringing money into the school so that's something else that can be done because i know a lot of people start selling all sorts of things all sorts of things i've heard all sorts of things i don't even want to start mentioning and it just looks untidy just seems untidy just shifts your focus sometimes um doing too many things at the same time you have to look for ways that you can internally generate 
money if you have a playground for example you can hire that playground and um, you can use generate if you have a room where people can come and use for lectures at the weekend or whatever the case may be try and look for ways to generate money so that your focus will not shift because you still need your brain and your mind on your school except if it's just profit making and you've rolled it out to somebody else to do that for you um, I don't want to be digressing too much I want to really talk about those 10 things that are Oh, giddy gone. Not easy at all. Now, number four, you can't stop learning. You have to keep on learning. You have to keep on developing yourself. Technology is evolving. Um, strategies for teaching are evolving. Everything is evolving around the world globally. So do not have a fixed mindset. You have to have a growth mindset. You have to be a lifelong learner. You can't stop learning and reading books. Um, I got a point where the books I wanted to read were so many. I was thinking, how am I going to find the time to read all these books? I already naturally love reading anyway. So I shifted some of my reading to audios and they've served me. I do a lot of reading, audio books, and I also do audio summaries as well. And they help me and they help to build me up. So you can't stop learning. Training courses, seminars, make sure you're doing that and it doesn't always have to be some that are in the, those that are in the educational sector strictly you know how we have cross-curricular links when we're teaching children we're teaching something teaching them something in math and you can see that it's showing up in science and it's showing up in another subject area the same way that's the same way that you can go to a conference where the tech guys are you know or the marketers are and then you're going to be able to pick up one thing or the other and also network you get it if you don't get it forget about it i don't know which year you're going to be watching this this video it may just be so out number five the thing you need to need is you need to lead your team lead your parents and lead the pupils so when people do start school they just assume oh i'm the school leader and then it's just about the school you have to carry the parents along especially when you have young parents you have to carry them along because a lot of things are new to them even when it comes to the parenting a lot of them are very this they may appear to overprotective of their children especially when they are first time when the children when they're first time parents you find that uh they may be you know it may be they may be concerned about a lot of things so say for example i do a lot of parent coaching i do a lot of therapy for parents I help them along. What I'm not saying that you have to go and read there, you have to go and do all the situation I've done. What I mean is that you just have to be able to provide some kind of service to your parents to help them feel better about their parenting and to help them learn how to work with you as a school. Okay? Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, put it in the comments and I'll try again in the comment section. Number six, you'd have sleepless nights. Honestly, you would have sleepless nights. Don't let anybody tell you that, oh, you're not running the school, you're not, you're not having sleepless nights. There are times when you'll be concerned about one thing or the other. You want something to go on well. And even if you sleep, you're sleeping, you want iron, right? You know, because you just have concerns. So, you would have sleepless nights. You're going to have to delegate. You're going to have to um, be calm about a lot of things. You're going to have to be trusting. You're going to have to hire the right kind of people that you can trust with the pupils, with the students in your school. Because... You're dealing with lives, not files, so it's very easy for people to um, assume that we're well, dealing with just files, marking and teaching. But how about the children? You know, when you have goals for them, we have expectations for them. If those expectations are not met, you can't sleep at night. If you know that a child um, can do significantly better and you're sleeping on it, you're not bothered, then perhaps. It's not your calling being in this educational sector maybe it's just not for you especially when we just start started this thing up until the time where you are able to um transfer your values as a leader to those in your team it's very very important does that make sense huh? hmm? revision recap <laughs> so number seven is school bus the school bus is not a profit making venture like many people think the school bus oh if you have a school bus you're just driving around eh, dropping children here and there showing up your brand blah 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 i can tell you that when it comes to this school um as at 2022 it may change later but right now it is the bane of my existence i can't stand the issues that the school bus pose the school bus really is to um maintain your numbers for you it's not for you to make money off it. except if you're using it to do other things outside of the school i don't that's not what we do but after a while your boss begins to age 
Leasing a bus is so expensive. It just sometimes makes sense to buy a bus. Then you find that petrol money is this today, is that today, or you're look, right now there's a full scarcity. My guys are on the road with kegs trying to do their best to get petrol because are you going to tell the parents that they're not going to pick their children because it's a, it's a full scarcity? Of course not. You're going to have to do your best. But that's in recent times. Okay, how about the constant servicing of the bus all the time? It's worse than the generator. Our generator doesn't even give us any problem uh, when we used to use it. Um, we just used to call someone to services every single month whether there was a problem or not and that was it. But the bus, this one, this light, this, this, uh, this suspender, suspension, this, that, because Lagos roads are bad. So they really beat the boss. The boss is beating down no matter how new you buy it. After you use it for a year or two, it is just so run down. Air conditioner needs gas. This, there's always something. It just doesn't so, so stop. It drives me crazy. So now we are looking to outsource that service. Let somebody else deal with that headache and let us just have our peace. So that is the strategy that we're looking for. Unfortunately, a lot of people are not doing that business. It's actually a gap in the market. If people can just focus on having a fleet of buses and let and picking up um, children from different schools, I think it's going to be an amazing idea. That business idea is for you, not for me. <laughs> and if it's not for you, just pass the baton to somebody else because mm -mm, it's just not something I would love to do. Then number eight is staff loyalty. You would have some people that would be loyal. Ah, I have some people that are loyal. Oh, God will bless them. And in fact, there's no way that God won't bless them because they, they have just been there. And I have some that have been there and they left some for the UK. Um, yeah, the ones that it's majorly the UK that people went to. The person that went to Harvard has finished and returned to Nigeria, but he wasn't even directly employed, but he was still a part of us. Now, um, you have people that are very loyal and you have people that will tell you, when we had a growth mindset training today, I actually was speaking, the speaker had spoken and I was talking and I said, I just heard myself say, if you deliver a 9 to 4 service, then you will get a 9 to 4 salary. When people start schools, they need people to work with them, to hold their hands, to help them because it's almost impossible to do so many things. You can't, often times you can't afford it. If you are eating government money to, and you are stealing government funds or you are stealing money or you are made, in, you were born into a significant amount of money and that money goes all over your place, then this conversation is not stuff for you. You can just look for another video to watch. If you are the regular me and you that we are not looking for, uh, we don't have a significant bank loans, I bootstrap, I don't, I've never taken a loan at all. So, we're very, very, clever with our money we do our best with the money that we have so we couldn't afford to have so many 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 teachers we couldn't just so as i was saying so you have some people that will be loyal to you there's some people that work the weekends see there's no organization that works on just working hours there will be people that will pay the price and sometimes you can't afford it don't abuse people always appreciate people and as you grow and have some more money you must you must pay them because those people are the ones that will be there, you know, when you need to save. Because if, for example, you're doing a bus from Monday to Friday and your staff all work Monday to Friday, who's going to service the bus on Saturday? Who's going to service it if that is when it's going to be available to be serviced? If you have to do some shopping at the weekend, who's going to do it? When you don't have all the resources, at this time you don't have the facilities manager. We didn't start with the facilities and logistics manager and all sorts of things. We didn't start with all that. We have that now, but we didn't start like that. Everything, I used to go to the market almost every, the, once a month, twice a month. I used to go a lot anyway. Now that role has been completely delegated. I don't even know the last time I went to the market to go and buy anything for the school. But somebody else is doing a good job. But it took years. It really, really took a lot of years before we got to that level where somebody is buying all the supplies for the school. So those people are very, very loyal to you. And there's some people that are not looking at the time to close and go home. They will tell you there's traffic, there's this and that. Now. God will bring those people, your own Jonathans, that will come and help you as you grow the school. Because you're going to need those kind of people. The ones that are not ready, they're not ready. You can't force them because they will be doing it gradually and you will not get the results that you actually need. So, those ones that are loyal, please be good to them. Now, I had a situation where I had someone that was loyal for seven years. And after seven years, she became a fraud, which was... I just can't even, I, I never spare it. 
I never saw it coming. I never saw it coming, you know. And I had to sack her. I just had to. And that's a freak occurrence because I'm thinking seven years and you try and do this whole thing behind my back. You crazy. You just crazy. So, but for the normal regular people that are loyal to you, please, it's not the five hundred ten k tip that you're giving them. You're building them, building as much as you can into their lives. Um, you're giving them as many benefits as you possibly can. Please do that. Now, your pastor's prayer is not what grows your school. They will anoint your school, put oil everywhere to send the demons away and get the children to come to the school. Uh, okay, we get it. We do get it. However, those are not the acts that will actually give you the excellence that you should showcase to the world. Faith without works. So you can pray, pray and pray, anoint yourself, anoint everything is as greasy as the dodo next door. If you're not doing the work, if your chairs are not trained, if you're not, you don't have, um, if, you're not, if you don't have good products of the children and stuff like that, you're not wasting your time. So prayer without works is void. So you find people that every morning they're calling pastor, calling pastor, and you find a lot of people they want to be um, sucking up to pastors so that pastors will bring them on the pulpit or talk about their school so that they can get children into their school. Um, that is not what a church is for. Okay, so you're going to notice a dip in the video quality because um, my camera, I ran out of space on there. And I'm not going to wait till another day to do this video. So, you're just going to have to use this one. But we're almost done. So, uh, what's the last point that I wrote down? You, know, you need to be international about your rest and your self-care. Looking after yourself. So, this weekend, I just came back from a retreat where I went to renew my mind, refresh my mind, connect with my God, you know, just take time away. Very, very, very important. Just me, my family, anyway, I met up with other people and it was really, really good. So make sure that you are intentional about your rest, your self-care, have a hobby. Like I love doing videos. These videos are my, um, uh, uh, it's, this video making is one of my hobbies. Um, because you might not, you just can't be in the school, in the school, in the school, and that's all you do. You're going to go crazy. Um, you just have to find that something else that you do. Even if it's knitting, um, going dancing, going to the gym, um, I don't know what you want to do, coloring. Just find something that is a hobby that you're doing. So I hope you're able to get some value. I have a similar video to this with 10 different points i'll try and link it or put it at the end as an end screen or whatever it is that i do but just look around for it it's called 10 things 10 things i wish i knew before starting in school and that's the video that i said had the highest views as at 2022 which is about 10k or so <laughs> so i'm looking at looking for 100k views and that kind of thing but rome was not built in a day apparently for us that are doing evergreen um evergreen uh, videos if we're talking about um, somebody's life and uh, somebody's life that has been destroyed, you see one million views there because people want to kind of like, you know, people chat. Anyway, say, see you later. Bye-bye. It's Ronke Posh. See ya.